brand new Samsung Galaxy Fold 3 has certainly made some waves in the smartphone market, and I've been lucky enough to get my hands on one just for a couple of months to show you the ropes. This is of course the ever so popular phantom green version of the new Galaxy Fold 3. So what I'm going to do is jump into an unboxing, show you what you get inside, show you around a little bit, then we'll talk about practicality and the sort of sizing of the Fold 3. I will compare it to my old Note 10 Plus and to a tablet just so you get a good idea of how big this thing actually is. So sit back, relax and stay tuned whilst we explore the brand new Galaxy Fold 3. What's up guys, welcome back to Tech It Easy. Let's not waste any time here, let's just get straight into the unboxing. So as I mentioned earlier, this of course is the phantom green version of the Galaxy Fold 3. Really fancy box, doesn't really mess you around. You open the box and the Fold 3 is just there, unfolded in all its glory. First thing I noticed is that the phantom green isn't actually all that green at all. I actually thought I'd been given the black version by accident, but it turns out this is the green. It only seems to be visible in certain light, so very, very subtle. Nonetheless though, it feels amazing. The metal body of the phone is something that I've missed since my Pixel 2 days. It feels much better than my Note 10 in my opinion. Still prone to fingerprints, but much better in many, many ways. Now, you've probably heard on the great van that there is no charger included with the Fold 3, nor is there an S Pen, which is a bit of a shame. Kind of expected the whole package with this phone considering you actually have to pay so much money for it. You do, however, get a USB-C charging cable as well as a SIM ejector tool. Now, one of the biggest critiques about the Galaxy Fold 3 is actually its camera module. It seems tiny in comparison to the previous Fold 2 and flagships such as the S21 Ultra. But I want to draw your eyes to something really quick here, the Note 10 Plus. It was widely considered a beast of a phone with a pretty decent camera setup at the time, and this was just two years ago. Now, just look at the size difference alone. The Fold 3's camera module really isn't all that small in comparison. Yes, it would have been nice to have the specs of a flagship camera on this device, but from brief testing, I don't think it would actually disappoint you, and I will do a dedicated Galaxy Fold 3 camera test video for you if that's what you want, so let me know down in the comment section if that's what you want to see. Now, whilst we're comparing sizes, I want to quickly show you how it compares to the Note 10 Plus, which again at the time was widely considered a huge phone. The Fold 3 in its folded position is actually just less than half the size. When we unfold it, it's about half the size of my Galaxy Tab S5e. So not a tablet by any means, but still an awesome and surprisingly practical media consumption device. Now, obviously we're talking about width here. In its folded position, it is incredibly thick. It's actually probably double, if not more, than a Note 10 Plus. So that is something to bear in mind. This thing is gonna take up a lot of room in your pocket. And if you're wearing really tight jeans, you may even struggle a bit here. But it's not exactly a surprise. I guess if you're buying this phone, it's something that you're sort of already expecting. Now, I wanna give you the best idea of what the Galaxy Fold 3 is like to own. So I'm currently working through all the questions that I had about the Galaxy Fold 3, the Fold 2, and even the original Fold. So one of my questions or concerns was the crease down the middle. I thought it would be super prominent and distracting, but seriously, you won't actually notice it that much. Only occasionally when it catches certain light and maybe when you're doing a bit of sketching. Overall though, it's really not all that bad. At the same time, slightly disappointed they haven't managed to get rid of it though. Perhaps that is something we can look to in the next version. And I would expect Samsung to get that right at the very least in the next version, as Huawei have already worked out a way to get rid of the crease on their phones. Now, the next thing I was thinking about when considering buying a folding phone was general practicality. Is it gonna be too big? And is that cover display gonna be too small for me? Well, before I talk about that, the first thing that stood out to me was the weight. It is something that I've really paid attention to on this phone and not something I've usually paid attention to on other phones. But the Fold 3 does feel like a literal brick in my pocket. It actually fits in your pocket just fine, but it seriously weighs you down. Do you really notice it? 
In terms of fitting it into your hand though, yeah, it's not bad. It's kind of easy to grip when it's folded up. Feels odd when you're on the phone. Holding a mini brick in your hand is something that's going to take some getting used to. But the surprising thing for me is how perfect the size of the unfolded display is. It's just large enough to hold with two hands and type easily. It feels a lot better balanced when it's unfolded. And as I mentioned earlier, browsing the web, watching movies, or even multitasking just feels great, which is kind of conflicting because my initial thoughts on the Fold 3 were, why didn't they just make this thing a lot bigger? Like it's big anyway, but you might as well have gone all out and gone the extra mile and sort of made it a more tablet-like experience. Next point of call on the practicality list is the cover display. Again, will take some getting used to and some apps do struggle with it, which is particularly annoying because there isn't really a middle ground here. The cover display is too narrow for some apps and the aspect ratio of the main display also presents some issues for other apps, which is probably one of my biggest complaints about the Fold 3 from my initial impressions. The best way to get around this is using the split screen function on the main display, which don't get me wrong is a cool feature to have, but it is a little bit annoying that you have to do that to get some apps to work the way you want them to. But things like Instagram and Snapchat are a few apps that come to mind that work better when you're in your split screen mode. Now I've had the Galaxy Fold 3 for just less than a week now, so I don't want to give too much away in terms of durability, performance and battery life until my full review. But I can say this, the battery life isn't making a great first impression. I'm finding myself charging it a lot and I do worry there's little chance of the Galaxy Fold 3 making it to the end of the day. Performance at a glance though is pretty fantastic, no obvious issues there. The 120Hz on both screens does make a massive difference. I've come from 60Hz on the Note 10 Plus and I can honestly say that the increase in refresh rate is really noticeable and it is much appreciated. But on the subject of displays, I do doubt the bright of the Fold 3. I found myself having it on max brightness more and more when I'm using it and even then I'm not too sure if I'm fully satisfied with it. Now I'm actually going to leave things there now because I don't want to give too much away until I've done my full review. I feel like I need a little bit more time to get to grips with the Fold 3 and find out all its flaws and the bits where it shines amongst other phones. What I can say though is overall first impressions of the Galaxy Fold 3 are excellent. It's actually exceeded expectations in many, many areas for me. And I think I'm gonna really enjoy using this over the next couple of months. As always though, let me know down in the comment section what you think of the Galaxy Fold 3. Is it practical or do you think it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare for you? Just before we leave, if you did find yourself enjoying the video, please do leave a cheeky like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, do consider joining the Discord server to get involved with the channel and chat to like-minded techies. For now though, I've been Alex. Thank you so much for watching and remember, take it easy.